Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, dear colleagues and uh, friends uh, like-minded who uh, join us in uh, the fight against Im uh, impunity for international crimes. Welcome to Nuremberg, welcome to the Nuremberg Forum 2018 of the International Nuremberg Principles Academy. Here in this historic courtroom, courtroom 600, where it all began in 1946 and uh, which led then uh, for the first General Assembly of the United Nations in London in the same year to the adoption of the Nuremberg Principles. But then, unfortunately, it took 52 years until 1998 before uh, that was codified what in Nuremberg was already agreed upon uh, through the Rome Statute. And uh, the ICC today is reality, the Rome Statute is reality, and we will look back, we will look at the situation as it is, and we will look uh, into the future. Is the ICC what we had hoped it would be? Can it achieve what we all wish it would achieve? How can we support it? in the things uh, that it would achieve. These uh, the thematic uh, issues we will discuss uh, during uh, the next days, and it's not going uh, to be forgotten after this conference. We will take this up and we will continue the dialogue with the stakeholders of the ICC because it is our common goal to end impunity for the most heinous crimes in the world. I won't keep you long. I just would like to extend a really, really warm welcome. We are honored by the presence of the Federal Foreign Minister of Germany. We are honored by the presence of the Chief Prosecutor of the ICC, the President of the Kosovo Tribunal, and many others who have responsibility in the fight against uh, international uh, crimes and uh, whom we want to support uh, with our work. So if our work leads to support, and I think this forum is going to be a success. I wish us fruitful discussions and uh, an interesting uh, dialogue uh, in the next uh, uh, two days. So welcome again to Nuremberg. Thank you. A warm welcome to everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard in, in the moment, this is a kind of speed dating welcome because there is not enough time for everybody uh, to say what we want, what we would like to say. But for us in Nuremberg, my name is Mali, I'm the mayor of Nuremberg. It's a great honor to host the conference of the occasion, on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Rome Statute right here in Nuremberg, especially right here in this room where the Nazis were judged between 1945 and 1949. If you look around, you will see and feel the remembrance on this occasion, I think. These Nuremberg trials mark the beginning of international prosecution of crimes against humanity, of aggression and genocide. The IANP, Klaus talked to you in a moment, which thankfully organized this event, is an important contribution for the implementation of the Nuremberg principles and for the enforcement of human rights through international law. Therefore, we are really honored to give the platform for this conference. If we look at all the conflicts all over the world, there should not be any doubt about the necessity of ICC. But we all know that the ICC is still far away from being a generally accepted actor on international level. First, there is a lack of signing countries, especially of USA, China, Russia and India. And second, there has been strong criticism regarding on an unfair focus on African war crimes. And we will have to discuss about these things. Criticism is important, but it should not fog the awareness for what has been accomplished in the last 20 years. The Rome Statute is the best existing protection for the human rights all over the world. We are glad to have you here. A warm welcome to Nuremberg. Minister, uh, distinguished guests, it gives me great pleasure as the President of the Advisory Council of the Nuremberg Principles Academy to welcome you very warmly into this historic courtroom for our discussions on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Rome Statute. The Rome Statute and the Nuremberg Principles have very much in common. What's been brought forward is the 
principle of individual accountability for, the, for serious crimes and an end to impunity. As I look around this room, I uh, am so impressed with the um, audience seated here, the expertise and human rights commitment. Um, some people in some quarters may see you as a threat, but here we value you. We see you as champions of human rights, of justice, and the rule of law. And this is what the Academy wants to acknowledge and uphold you for today. The, um, this forum 28 is, uh, welcomes a reflection on the past, present, and future of the ICC at, on the occasion of the 20th anniversary, and we're particularly interested on how we can make improvements for the next 20 years. The uh, universal recognition of the Nuremberg principles and their application is a core mandate of the Nuremberg Principles Academy. And uh, as I said, the Nuremberg legacy aims to hold individuals accountable for serious crimes, as does the Rome Statute, which aims to end impunity for the perpetrators of these crimes and thus to contribute towards the prevention of such crimes. And discussions that I hope we will have in the next two uh, days will help to enhance our further functioning uh, in international criminal justice. And uh, I'm now uh, going to be reading a statement that the uh, members of the Advisory Council have issued. But before I do that, let me thank our director, Klaus Rackwitz, and the deputy director, Dr. Vivian Dietrich, and their team for putting this conference together. It's not easy for a few individuals to do this. Um, so thank you very much to the two of you. Um, we call this uh, statement a declaration on the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the ICC statute. We, the Advisory Council of the International Neuromal Nuremberg Principles Academy, which was established to promote sustainable peace through justice and the rule of law, are firmly convinced that international criminal law upholds respect for human rights, helps to prevent conflicts, and facilitates reconciliation after the fighting ends. To achieve these aims and following the Nuremberg precedent, the international community has developed human rights norms as set forth in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenants and has created mechanisms to end impunity for the most serious crimes known to humankind. These mechanisms, including the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, and the creation of the first permanent International Criminal Court, the ICC, on 17 July 1998, all ensure accountability for the most serious violations of uh, international crimes and for the preservation of fundamental human rights and for the support of the global enforcement of international criminal law and to build national capacity to investigate and prosecute these crimes. We are deeply concerned by the growing disrespect for international criminal law and international human rights law across the globe and the unwillingness to fight impunity and uphold international human rights norms. We are deeply concerned by vitriolic attacks against the integrity of international criminal justice and its institutions, and the widespread disregard for the rule of law and basic respect for human rights. And therefore, we recognize the promise made by the international community at Nuremberg in 1945-1946, and we call upon all states to end impunity for international crimes by supporting 
the prosecution of these crimes both through international and domestic courts. Thank you very much. Federal Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, Mayor of the City of Nuremberg, Ulrich Mali, President of the Academy, Navi Pillay, Director Klaus Rackwitz, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure as President of the Higher Regional Court to welcome you in, to this year's Nuremberg Forum. It is only right that the 20th anniversary of Rome Statute is celebrated here in the most famous courtroom in the world. After the Second World War, the trial which should change the world took place in this very room. It is the birthplace of modern international law. The first of the Nuremberg principles underlines that individuals who commit crimes against peace, war crimes and crimes against humanity can be held accountable. This opened a way to a new international law based on the principles of personal responsibility and individual culpability. However, this concept of a new world order based on the rule of law remained unfulfilled over a long period of time. Over decades, the Nuremberg Principles, as expressed in the judgments of 30th of September and 1st of October 1946, had little effect in the world of international law. The way opened up by them was not used. Only after the turning point in the world history in 1989 and 1990 and the atrocities in the former Yugoslavia decisive steps were taken. First, the adoption of the Rome Statute in 1998, and second, the inaugural session of the International Criminal Court in 2003. The ICC walks on the way opened by the Nuremberg Principles and began to pave and to broaden it. Is there a reason to celebrate? I say yes and no. On the one hand, 26 cases have been tried by the ICC. 32 warrants of arrest have been issued. Only recently the ICC has declared that it may exercise jurisdiction over the alleged dep deportation of the Rohingya people from Myanmar to Bangladesh as well as potentially other crimes under Article 7 of the Rome Statute. A very important and courageous step. On the other hand, it is lamentable that only two of the five permanent members of the Security Council have signed the Rome Statute. Only the United Kingdom and France have become members of the ICC. The USA, Russia and China have not joined. Neither have Israel and India. This actually weakens the impact of the ICC. It is therefore all the more significant that various nations Germany among them, try to enforce international law via their own national law. In Germany, the Code of Crimes Against International Law went into force on 30th of June in 2002. Thus, Germany complied with its obligations under the Genova Conventions of 1949 to punish crimes which are punishable under international law, also under its, under its domestic law. The German co Code of Crimes Against International Law applies to all offenses designated therein without regard to where the crime was committed. For reasons of practic practicability, the decision whether to prosecute in many cases at the discretion of the prosecution service. But the mandatory prosecution principle applies, for example, to offenses which are German is suspected of having committed 
and which are not being prosecuted before an international court of law or by a state on whose territory the offense was committed. In those cases, the prosecution service is bound to prosecute. The Federal Prosecutor General in Karlsruhe is responsible for the prosecution of crimes within the scope of the German Code of Crimes against international law. This responsibility is not just an empty shell. In view of the atrocities in the Syrian civil war, German investigators collect evidence to bring the responsible individuals to justice. Eleven federal public prosecutors form the so-called War Crimes Unit, competent for the prosecution of genocide and crimes against humanity. Currently, these public prosecutors conduct 80 investigations. Among the suspects are IS fighters and members of the Syrian regime. So the victims in Syria put their hope on the federal prosecutor Germany. A general. What is the role of the International Nuremberg Principles Academy in this, in this interplay with the legacy of Nuremberg trials, the national prosecution offices and other sh uh, stakeholders in international law? You could say that it acts as a signpost and provides a roadmap. The Academy was founded to promote the Nuremberg Principles in the world of international law. It pursues the aim, in the tradition of the United Nations, to save the peoples of the world from the scourge of war. The Nuremberg Academy is in this context a beacon of hope. hope. In this historic courtroom, 600, the various aspects of international law can be promoted by inviting the stakeholders to discussions and conferences. The Academy provides a forum to develop the international law, discuss current problems and solve new challenges. In addition, the Academy wants to prick the conscience of humanity. Its task is to point out again and again that situations as in Syria are not acceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish the Nuremberg Forum 2018 fruitful and constructive discussions. I wish the International Academy of Nuremberg Principles every success and further growth and development. I hope you all have a nice stay in this beautiful city of Nuremberg and gain wonderful new impressions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Ladies and gentlemen, before we have the honor to listen to the keynote speeches, uh, we have a short video message from the last living prosecutor who prosecuted in this courtroom, from Ben Ferenc, who is 99 years old, or in his 99th uh, year, and still following uh, uh, the actual developments uh, in the world. And he is as concerned as um, the advisory council uh, of the International Nuremberg Principles Academy. But uh, please listen to what Ben Ferenc, the last living prosecutor of Nuremberg, has to tell us. Greetings to you all. Some of you will recognize me as Ben Ferenc. I'm speaking to you now from Delray Beach, Florida in October 2018. I'm delighted to be welcomed by Director Rakwitz and the other old friends who will be in your audience. I'm sorry that I cannot join you. I am now in my 99th year and I'm trying to limit my travels. But I wanted to take the opportunity to pick on the few points which I think are relevant at this time of celebrating the 20th anniversary of the creation of the International Criminal Court. My plans go back to the first Nuremberg trials and Justice Jackson are the hopes of everyone that we would have a more peaceful world governed by law. The subsequent proceedings in which I had the honor of prosecuting the Einsatzgruppen for the biggest murder trial in human history, for the murder of over a million people, mostly Jews, uh, where I made the argument that we must have a more humane and peaceful world. We must have new values to substitute for 
settling disputes by war. It's gotten to be much too dangerous. We now have the capacity from cyberspace to cut off the electrical grid on planet Earth. That means that when heads of state are unable to agree, they send their young people out to kill other young people. When they get tired of killing each other, they go home and rest for a little bit, then they start again. That's the current system. It cannot continue because there'll be no life left on Earth if they ever let loose, not only with the nuclear weapons, but with the uh, cyberspace weapons, which are now costing billions of dollars, instead of using the money to care for the legitimate complaints of people who are suffering throughout the world. They use it to build more weapons to kill more people. We are in the hands of a government which does not think rationally on this problem. We have, for example, John Bolton, who is now the leading advisor to the President of the United States on these problems. He's the one who, when the United States signed the statute for the ICC, sent their ambassador, David Sheffer, down on a stormy day in the last day of the year to sign for the United States. It was reversed by John Bolton, who went in and said, no, signature of the United States president does not count. That's outrageous. In a speech which he just made recently in September to the Federalists, a very conservative group in Washington, he said the ICC will never support it. The ICC is dying and it is dead, is what he said. The ICC is dead. The ICC has many problems. It's still sick, but the ICC is there and it was a prototype. And uh, it will improve with time. It is improving with time. Um, they have excellent staff doing a very difficult, perhaps impossible job. But one day, this will follow the path of the bicycle. They said our bicycle couldn't fly. Well, we got a thousand planes in the air. One day we will recognize that law of war is a better way to go. I recall my Supreme Commander, Justice uh, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, as President of the United States, who warned the world, he said, the world can no longer turn to war. If civilization is to survive, it must choose the rule of law. Make your choice. Who do you follow? Dwight D. Eisenhower, President, or you follow John Bolton, who would destroy you all? I think his prediction that the ICC is already dead is not true. I think John Bolton will be dead before the ICC is dead. So you are the ones who built it. You are the ones who carried on. I'm now approaching my 100th year, and uh, I think my days may be numbered, but I have learned that you must substitute compassion and compromise as the tools to reach agreement. And I use my slogan, law, not war. And I have three pieces of advice. One, never give up. Two, never give up. Three, you said it, never give up. Good luck to all of you and all my best wishes. Thank you very much.